and hearing them all one by one, you suddenly feel that um, vegan journalism is being a bit of a minefield. Challenges before journalism. Challenges facing journalism. It's a subject that can be discussed for many, many days, forget just the half an hour. Day. But before we jump into that, I must compliment Mr. Murad Patna and his team for identifying 40 journalists under the age of 40 and giving this country a hope for the future of journalism. How many of us are aware of who was the first Indian journalist to win the famous Pulitzer Prize? Anybody in the audience? We have all heard of the Pulitzer Prize. Can anybody tell me who was the first Indian to win the Pulitzer Prize? Well, 1937, when we were still ruled by the British, an Indian called Gobind Bihari Lal, working in America, who was a freedom fighter and had gone to jail in California for the Indian freedom movement, is the first Indian to win the Pulitzer Prize. Was he related to any chance? Unfortunately, I'm not related to him. I wish I was. <laughs> Just the <laughs> There will be a lot of love in this country starting with Jawaharlal. I'm not related to anyone. Okay. So let's get back to the panel. We have with us some of the finest minds working in our business. They have been on television. They have been behind the screen. They have been training people to appear on television and write. For me, journalism is primarily the search for truth. And in that search, creating credibility. Are we doing that? In 2020, when Twitter is being acquired by Tesla, we all have the challenges for a nation. I would like to start with Dr. Zurabi. You are teaching at an institute. What are you telling your students? What is happening in our business? Thank you, Mr. Lund, for uh, having me here in this panel. Well, when I teach my students, oh, we try and be very, very objective. When I teach objective, objectivity, you know, in news, there are some students who ask me, ma'am, then what about the business side of the news? So I also, uh, you know, add on the classes related to the, you know, media management and business side of news and how business models are changing or, you know, how D2C model is now going on. So there are so many challenges that we see in the industry today, beginning from, you know, job security to, uh, you know, uh, wage boards to the flood of opinions and you know fake news in the media so we try and you know deal with the disinformation disinformation and uh inform Sorry. our students teach our students deliberate on topics like you know how to combat fake news so you know we try and uh also include the technological part where we uh you know teach them artificial intelligence what vikram chandra was just talking so I always tell them that, uh, you know, you should be a one-man army if you have to work with them in the media today. What do you tell them? Same. One man. Ditto. One person army. One, one man or one woman army. We have uh, Hitti here. What do you think of the biggest challenge facing the, the modern journalist? Somebody stepping into this room and saying, Hi, a very good afternoon to all of you and um, thank you to Anurag and the entire team for putting up such a great show. Um, you know, Bhavan, I think what you have said in your introduction kind of sums up the real crisis in journalism today. If anyone says there is no crisis in journalism, they are lying. They are completely lying. I mean, uh, the very fact today that it's become an us versus them in journalism is extremely sorry. I mean, we've never been taught that in our journalism school. Uh, I started at the Lady Sri Ram. We've never been told that it's going to be us versus them. You know, truth is true. You cannot have different versions of truth. You can have facts, 
jobs. You talk about objectivity. But I think, uh, you know, it's again unfair just to point a finger at the TV for doing that. I have been a television journalist for over 18 years now, 1 8. And uh, I had the good fortune of working across the best news brands with the best editors. You know, everywhere you get to learn, you get to imbibe a lot of things. But I have not been told or say anywhere that you need to say this, you need to do that. I think that is completely and completely up to an individual journalist. Because at the end of the day, it is about your credibility. You know, I worked with NDTV, I worked with Times now, I worked with Republic. So, you know, I, I have covered most of uh, the English media genre to understand. And the very fact today that TV is held guilty of putting forward its bias, its opinion, yes, it has. You know, we were just listening to Rahul Shivshankar and uh, he is not here right now, but I would disagree with so much he said. It is an ideal world to come and sit here and say that you know it should be this, it should be that. Definitely it should be that. But I think each one of us today is responsible for what we do in whatever field we are. I mean, I cannot blame a particular editor for behaving in a certain manner. No. There are so many times that you know you might just see that something is happening on some other channel, you know, they're reporting in a particular fashion. You you might just be press to say, oh, you also have to do this because you have to compete. But then I told my editor, I am not doing this. I was told just rush, you know, put this your piece and this uh, year and no matter what we will roll live. I said, no, there is no need to do that. I will decide being on the field what is important for me to do at that particular time. If I think the situation merits that I need to run after him, I need to chase him, I will do that. But if it was not required and it, if it, it is just to kind of, you know, for the sound effects, the sound system, I am not doing it. But likewise, uh, now, Bhuvan, what we see is uh, there was an independent media, you know. Um, and I think all of us should be independent because that is what journalism is, uh, you know. So be that we all should be independent. You can have an opinion, fine, but I being a journalist cannot put my opinion or throw my opinion, push my opinion. Anyone that is being unfair, that's completely being unfair. But the last point that I want to say before I toss it back to you is uh, there is still a lot of hope in the social media, but I think also on the social media now you see this tendency of picking sides, picking and choosing sides, and I think that is again very, very dangerous because the moment you start distracting your viewer. The moment you start putting in conspiracy theories, the moment you start compromising with facts, and the moment you start creating a surround system, there is something that you want to hide. Wow. Uh, you are a brave person to be able to say all that. A lot of people I know in this business don't have that knowledge, and I appreciate that. Uh, there's a movie called Citizen Kane, considered one of the finest films ever made, and there's a line in it. There's no war in Cuba. That's what the journalist told me, the editor. The editor told me, if there's no war in Cuba, invent one. So are we inventing news rather than making news? That's my question to Swati. Swati, Swati, one second. I just want to say one little thing. You know, if it's not about uh, being brave or being courageous, I think every one of us is woman. Uh, you know, I, any journalist that I know, you know, my friends, a lot of them are sitting here right now, they, they're doing far better than what we know. But, you know, the tragedy is that we, we start identifying news with just, say, five to ten people. That is wrong. Every, every journalist today out in the field is doing tremendous work. I mean, we, we really need to identify that. We need to appreciate that. It is not easy to do this. It is not, and please, news is just not limited to the five, six anchors that you see on prime time every day. News is so much more. Ask these anchors and you know people how many times do they really go out in the field? They don't do that. They can. I. I mean, I can just tell you one little thing. A lot of them cannot go out without their security, their private security. It's that bad. In a lot of areas. The more you start taking sides, that becomes dangerous because you are putting your opinion onto other people. And I think that needs to be 
called out right away. The biggest challenge I think we have faced. Swatiji. Sure. Um, thank you uh, for uh, this panel. And I think the pertinent question that everybody has been talking about is the challenge that we face. And I agree 100%. There are tons of it, and more so now because of the way the world has changed, the way we consume news, the way the youngsters now look at television or print or social media as mediums to take news back with them. Let me be very candid to tell you that these youngsters. Uh, frankly, don't depend on any of the television news that they see, or to that matter, believe in it. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of these young college-going kids, uh, you know, have their own, uh, you know, have their own opinions on things, and they 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 do know the darker side of media uh, much more than what we perhaps when we were growing up understood. So, I guess the challenges are far many, and to point out one. Uh, in my mind is the information overload and the ability to identify, address the issue in the most objective manner is the challenge that we face. And when you said, do we invent news or do we present it as is? Well, uh, frankly, uh, as they say, a good story is not a story, right? Uh, 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 and, and unfortunately, or fortunately, we are told, we are told, and we tell our teams to find out things that people are not aware of. Now, it need not be negative always, as I say, but yeah, it has to be something that people should know and feel uh, that this piece of news is giving them something more than that, what they already knew, right? So, I think information overload has to come down in whatever way it can. And I think uh, accuracy and speed has to be given as much importance with the credibility of the information. So the checks that we do at our organization uh, is something that we need to also inculcate in the social media world because a lot of fake news stuff and people have talked about it already uh, in the previous panels. That uh, has to be addressed and I think some kind of regulation and self-regulation also uh, becomes critical and important. Here. So that becomes the biggest challenge in my mind. Thank you, Swadhiji. Tarun, you have a legal background. And she's talking about regulation. Do you think external regulation is required in the journalism, especially in television? Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhuvan. First, I'll start this with an anecdote, which I would like to share with all of you. When you have a problem, generally try to break it into the smallest unit. It's easier to understand. I'll tell you how. There was a channel and a prominent editor. He was running a story of illegal parking. Now, parking is a big issue in all cities of India because nobody follows the development plan. A development plan is what is made for each city. So, every building needs to have a parking. He ran a huge campaign. Illegal parking everywhere. Even near my office, there is a, the authorities are doing nothing about it. The campaign ran for a while. I saw the campaign and since I do prominently a legal show, I called him. I said, sir, I have visited your office building many times. Your ground floor and your basement, you don't have a basement parking. The ground floor, which should be used as a parking, you are using it as an office. The seventh floor should have a refuge area for fire safety. You don't have a refuge area, you have a studio on the seventh floor. So, what illegality that you are talking of, you are committing yourself. So, the first notice from the municipality or the authority should come to your office. The campaign was discontinued within the next 10 minutes. The problem is there. We don't read and then we try to, in a sense, give huge sermons. That's the problem with editors. You have not read. So, it is important that if you are doing journalism, you go to your BPMC Act, which is the Bombay Provincial Municipal Corporation Act, which, if I should tell all of you, is applicable in Delhi because it was co opted for all other municipalities in India. It is important for us to read these basic documents. Of course, you can discuss the nuclear deal or other important issues, which, of course, a lot of people, anyways, won't read about. But what you face day to day is more important. And for that, you have to read your basic law. In absence of basic reading, so I'll tell you because I gave you this example. I was sitting with an industrialist and he told me one thing. A lot of your news anchors and a lot of your presenters look like they've just come out from the ramp into the studio. There is a lot of form. There is no substance. They talk absolute rubbish for 25 minutes and so I don't watch TV anymore. Because it doesn't seem that this child has read anything. He speaks very good English. The English is very slick. Looks very good. But when he talks, it makes no sense. So, in a sense, we are alienating our core audience. There are, of course, uh, as Deepthi pointed out, 
you know, there are some issues which are uh, taken up by the media on a day-to-day -day basis, which have got a lot, lot of people watching them. Popular issues. Right. If it's a temple issue, people will watch. If it is, you know, some other popular issues on a day, some politics, see, we give a lot of value to statements given by important people. For example, anytime anybody is made a minister, you make him a chief guest, and regardless of whether he is, knows about the topic or not, just go back and think. Would you invite that person if he was not in the chair? So I remember a health minister who I won't write to name, he came on the dais once in one of the functions where he was to speak about health and just recited movie dialogues for half an hour. And everybody was laughing at him, of course. So I mean, there are many things to correct here. But what we, where we have gone on as media, because today is not media, not about politicians, is that we stopped reading and started sermonizing simply because we have a mic in our hands. So if we just go back to reading the books and then talk, Maybe we start to make better sense. And coming back to your question now, when you said about external regulation, see, anywhere in the world, especially in democracies, no external regulation works. Because any form of external regulation, and because I primarily cover legal and law office, will be mandated by bureaucrats, judges. There will be no media guys sitting there. They will sit in judgment day in, day out on what editors do. And that will be a big problem because then everything that you read or you know what is written about will be scrutinized from the point of law it will become very difficult for to work so no external regulation for media can ever work in any democracy and i think we should uh, uh, we should not even talk about these things but we have censorship for films but that is uh, censoring itself is a wrong word uh, censoring in my view uh, shouldn't be there of course for some if you are inciting hatred, there should be censorship. But why should there be censorship for routine movies? There is no case when the OTTs came in. OTT showed all kinds of content. Was it bad content? No. But you, you have censorship for films, but no censorship for OTT. And OTT is doing perfectly fine. So uh, that is my limited answer to your question. Which is, uh, all of you are saying very important things. I wish we had more time, but I am going to continue till I am stopped. Uh, you know, because... These are the issues we are facing. You know, there's an the issue of uh, celebrity culture, for example. And you invite people to speak on subjects which they have no relation to. So just because somebody gave me an honorary doctorate, I got a channel calling me and they said, we are going to talk about vaccination. Dr. Saab, can you speak? I said, what kind of Dr. Saab do you think I am? You know, this is no relationship between me and the medical profession. He was so insistent, you know. It's just the way the research is done today about various subjects and, and, and Limited time they get to put together a panel. Maybe at eight o'clock they start calling you for a ten o'clock panel. So they get two hours. Are we creating a society in which celebrities are more important than the real issues the country is facing? A marriage of two individuals becomes a subject of national importance, and not the life of a jawan who is serving in the border right now and how his family is feeling. Are we going in that direction? Sadly, yes. So what, what should be a priority of a country that is now celebrating its 75th year of independence? No, I, I completely agree and I say this, uh, that it's us who are making that happen. I mean, all of us, with the views that we give to such or the attention or uh, the importance to these events, make it the grand event, right? I mean, and people want to watch it. It's, it's like um, it's like saying that the more likes and the more uh, follow followers you get on Twitter, that's how you are, by the way, these days evaluated. evaluated. So you know, so the 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 marriage of the two stars become the big talking point purely because people want to watch every move that they can get to know of that. So it's it's really about how the society is reciprocating to that news and how we are then forced and also, I mean, in many ways, uh, pushing to, to, you look at the paparazzi and, and the kind of stress that it creates for all of us to the extent of the safety of these people and how they just do everything to get that one shot right of the celebrity. And what does it give? It really just entertainment. And as you said, the real issues are getting completely swayed away. And I said, the good news um, never sells. It's, it's, it's just the... The tougher situation that one talks about is what that, that, uh, grabs everyone's attention. In this case, entertainment obviously is the biggest form of news selling at this stage. And that's why we are opening up 
celibate. But we are a deeper civilization. We have been around for thousands of years. Why do we get into frivolous issues? Why do we get into frivolous debates evening after evening? And you get some of the most obnoxious people who, you know, we don't really need to watch. They become celebrities because television and the journalists are giving them time. Who's making this decision? Actually, I feel it's a bitch that people are watching you. When you're in the studio, you feel people watch you. People don't watch you. You go out on the street and ask if people watch you. Nobody they watch you on mute most of the times. So, 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 I they think just see you for the kind of actions and the kind of theatrics. I, they, they don't listen to you at all. That's what I'm saying. They have silence. I was seeing yes. yes. Netflix and other no, it's not that. I was talking to a Gujarati industry sometime back in Delhi. I said, What are you doing in the news? I said, What are you doing in the news? I said, What are you doing in the news? So, in the end, what happens is it's all good to speak in clipped accent, but in the day, when, when, when this chap pays to the cable wala, what are you giving him? If you're not giving him, he's not watching you. You may feel you're sitting in the studio being asked, nobody watches you. I think I've been given implications that the lunch is going to be served. We don't want to hold back anybody. But we'll take two questions. Let me just let, let them just ask two questions. Yes, sir. Okay. Just two questions from the audience. Anybody? Okay. Uh, I have a question. When is the lunch being served? I'm sorry. Anybody else? Yeah, why don't we ask a question to the audience? I think. Why don't we? Why don't we? Yeah. I, I think we've a lot of students hiding in the back. So. I don't know what your opinion today of uh, news is. I mean, uh, it, it was very fashionable. I, I remember during our times when we studied, there was so much of glamour to be a journalist. You had a completely different outlook of what, you know, being a journalist is. Still, you were thrown into the real field. You were told, told to go and get coffee for people, go in your caves. And I'm like, shit, is this why I studied? I mean, I want to do something different. I want to bring about a change. So your editor tells you, okay, go, you're here to bring a change, go and do this story, go and do this. So, you know, that, that is the kind of introduction we all had. Now, here, journalism students or anyone who's sitting, I mean, for how long do you spend time watching news on television? What is the kind of news you really watch? This us versus them, does it happen close to, you know, your society, your peer group? Is it becoming a part of our lives? So us versus them is in every drawing room, every dining table in this country, probably around the world. Anyway, so I anybody see, got? I see the young ones in the back, and yes. some of them are raising yeah. their hands. Can yeah. somebody yes. listen off yeah. mic? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, a mic reaches you all. A mic will come to one. Uh, yeah. The voice will reach us. It's small room. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, my question is with respect. Oh, they can't record. Oh, they need a microphone. Just one second. So in the meantime, that happens, I also consider myself from the same age uh, group. And uh, to be fair and honest, I grew up watching some of the journalists that I adored and admired and honestly kept. Uh, I mean, their words meant more to me than my own father's. And uh, I, I actually lost all of that admiration and love and, and all the adjectives that you can add on while I saw people competing, uh, not for the fact, but for the TRPs and of course for the eyeballs and the attention. And honestly, some of the uh, broadcasters out there are uh, not really competing with each other, they are competing with Ekta You know, it's, it's all about getting uh, the, the attention. But anyways, yes, please, go ahead. You haven't got the mic yet. You haven't got the mic, wow, okay. Uh, then please shout. That's fine, we do that a lot as journalists. Please go ahead. Uh, so, my question is with respect to sensationalism. Uh, recently, in the, uh, there was this uh, Rajasamha TV uh, debate in which one of the DU professor has, has given this theory with respect to sensationalism in news is that because we live in this capitalist society, competitiveness is requisite. As a byproduct, we have this social anxiety, and in order to pacify our. Yes, social anxiety. We turn, uh, we uh, refer to something which is relevant to us, and that is sensational news. So, if sensationalism is providing tranquility for somebody, why is it a vice? Go ahead, anybody. Does, does sensationalism provide you tranquility? Well, like, really? There could be like vice. Uh, recently, there was this uh, uh, reporter who was dancing and conveying news. See, I mean, okay. uh, we we just discussed this off the uh, after the debate. Yeah. Yeah, yes. So, you know, uh, he's made a good point. Yes, sensationalism right. again, credibility, truth, facts, sensationalism. 
I mean, we know the problem. The best part is, much like the Congress party, we know what the problem is. But then we do not want to solve it. Or you believe that there's going to be someone who will come and, you know, solve this for you. Because, you know, we all can sit in moral judgments, sit on platforms, and make, make our observations. But when it comes to watching these channels, you would want to go and watch them. I don't know what they give to you. Then you will also have a viewpoint on, oh God, they are so bad. They are doing this. They are dividing the society. So I, I don't know. The circle keeps going on and on. Thank you for being sensational speakers and a sensational panel. And we'll continue the sensation after the slow. Thank you.